Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO. I think the sixth episode here, in which we're uh, playing as Stay Guang Dong. But uh, we got some aftershocks to think about because we had some sort of oil crisis happen out there in the Middle East. Uh, Iraq has exploded. Even if the fires of the Middle Eastern oil fields were ruled away from Guangdong, the effects were still pal palpable and immediate. Plastics, a wonder material so useful for insulating electronics and absorbing the heat generated by Guangdong's myriad product catalog. When the flow of oil stopped, the hoarding began, first by the companies that could be seen the uh, storm approach, then by the average consumer when the average price had risen threefold. Scarcity, when mixed with fear and uncertainty, proves highly combustible. As the plastic shock spread from the commodities trading floors of boardrooms of the living rooms, the rumors spread about what the, would disappear next, food, clothes, stationaries. Men and women alike flooded the local supermarkets and corner shops, seeking to buy in bulk anything that would provide them some security. Better now, they reasoned. While the price was right, it was a frenzy, a feeling of the world coming undone. Above them, pseudo executives furrowed their brows and sucked their teeth on their projected losses. Their ink flowing uh, row after row on ledgers projected on solitary screens, cost overruns, falling demand, undershot targets, and numbers all told a single story, and they braced themselves for difficult times to come. Far beyond the confines of Guangdong, bureaucrats and politicians skittered across the hallways of power in Tokyo, as unsettled by the oil crisis as a compatriot in Koshu. With a bigger picture in mind, they concerned themselves with how to best serve Japan's interests, leaving Guangdong far behind. The machine comes to a halt in the smoke-filled room. There wasn't another way to describe the Japanese console other than oppressive, ornately decorated as it was. The slit windows uh, funneled light into beams which sliced through the Consul General's light office, illuminating the gray haze of cigarette smoke and the mahogany of the desk which the Consul General sat behind. Takashima Masuo, a recent arrival to the city and a rather unhappy one at that, so Masashida Masaharu had gathered. He couldn't blame him. Between an ambassadorship to China or Manchukuo or being shunted off to Guangdong, he didn't know a Tokyo bureaucrat who would choose a ladder. Now this kid, he's one of those types who has more money than sense, yes? Matsushita Masaharu continued. As mind drifting back to the topic at hand, he drinks a little too much sake, starts a street fight, winds up putting a man in a hospital, frankly, a stay, and a cell will probably help him shape up. Why don't you tell his parents that? Takashima returned a slight nod, the embers at the end of his own cigarette flickering. They won't hear it. Their son can't be thrown in jail. It's an embarrassment. Now, there's nothing I like to do more than turn him over to you to, you to deal with, but where do you think the kid got his money from? It's an embarrassment to me if we let another snotty child get away with assault because their parents blow their noses with yen. It's not like we give them a life sentence anyways. How about this? Takashima snuffed out a cigarette, leaning back in his chair with a sigh. I can hand him over to you, but you'd be responsible when they complain to Tokyo. You'll be responsible for that, or for when they take their business elsewhere. That'll be your burden, is that clear? Fine, fine, let it be. Um, well, with that one, we could use more approval, so... That's fine, whatever. The Rising Tide. The world historical disaster, that is the oil crisis, has arrived at last on the shores of Guangdong. Aside from the resource shortages and trade disruptions, it also brings more urgent risk. There is a distinct chance that the chief executive Masashida Masaharu's hard work for the prosperity and stability of Guangdong will be swept away as if in a na Nankai tsunami. This demands swift decisive action. We'll need to move quickly to protect the economy. The pandemonium in the Legislative Council must be put to an end, and the flow of workers and capital out of our borders must be staunched at the earliest possible opportunity. That all that must be done, be done quickly for the welfare of the people of Guangdong, and the continued longevity of the Chief Executive's benevolent rule. Scrams to place Guangdong on higher ground. Oh boy. The greatest crime. Politics is politics, but profit is a matter of life and death. Mr. Shimasu Shi remains steadfast in his storm. Scale back production. Preserve innovative momentum. An island executive, Zelenko, a chamber of squabbling corporate uh, potentates, uh, potentates, at the best of times, is coming apart at the seams. Whatever happens, Basil Shida must remain on top. Also, we have a cup of green tea here, too. Hmm. Listen to Ibuka's concerns. Facing the storm. Though, we thought these pseudocrats would be the last example of Japan's fickle ways. It was not. Now, Basil Shida feels the weight of the world on his shoulders. Alas, all the protestations of the members of the co prosperity sphere that we are a rising star and critically important to the triumph of Pan-Asianism, were for not. In our time of need, our so-called allies left us to hang, and uh, oh, oh, well, that's not good. And we're now forced to fight alone. But Matsushi has not been caught off guard by this crisis, the Guangdong -Gong situ Guang -Gong situation. It's not worse than even the most pessimistic official in the state would have, would have thought. Our chief executive remains unfazed. On our own initiative, trusting in Matsushi's wise leadership, the state of, state of Guangdong and its people and corporations will rise out of this chaos stronger and more experienced than ever before. A personal invitation. Chief Executive Mats Matsushita Masaharo had just turned to leave when he heard Takashima speak again, catching him right at the beginning of the next routine in a long list of routines he had in a day. A quick walk out of this console, down the stairs into a chauffeur, and then drive to the Leco meeting to soothe whatever needed to be soothed, smoothed out. He twisted his neck around and looked back at the still sitting console, yes. Uh, if it wouldn't trouble you, I would like, like to extend an offer of goodwill. I have quite the impressive chef on the, my staff at the official residence, and I would like to quite like to continue our discussion over that in a more pleasant and relaxed setting than this. Oh, well, thank you for the offer, but I'm quite afraid that I have a meeting with the Legislative Council that I must attend. <coughs> uh, 
Well, Chief Executive, it is always your decision, but I will tell you that this the tempura is to die for. Takashima cocked his head to the side, taking a cigarette from his pack. Matsushita and Masaru considered his options. Closer relations with the Consul General meant slow, closer relations to Japan regardless of the cuisine on offer, but that could never be downplayed. But he didn't have a schedule stick to. Decisions, decisions. He always had so many of those, so I'll insist. You know what? We'll do that anyways. Rumblings of disaster. Of all the tycoons with a stake in Guangdong business, Matsushita Masahara was the first to grasp the existential threat of the oil crisis in the Middle East opposed to the five companies. As a country that maintained a myriad assembly lines with a great deal of automa automa automation and electric construction, Guangdong was a glutton for raw resources. Oil especially. If the oil dried up, the power went out. If the power went out, the assembly line shut down. If the sh assembly line shut down, the lifeblood of Guangdong froze in its veins so, and no product could be assembled or nor exported. As he sat at his desk reading the morning paper, Matsushita felt an overwhelming sense of dread. The only thing that frightened him more than the oil crisis itself was how Ibuka and Morito would react to it. If they failed to understand the gravity of the situation, they might try something stupid. Guangdong couldn't afford stupidity right now and needed stability. And mess with House Electronics, yay! Beautiful. More things have changed, it's happening again. That's a phrase uh, on everyone's lips in Guangdong. Beggars throng the streets of factories, lay off everyone they can. Families go hungry as the price of food skyrockets. The normal conversations of the Japanese salons are replaced with speculation over whose enterprise will fall next, just like last time, just like after Yusuda. It wasn't hard to predict that something like this would happen again. For the upper class and educated middle class, it was obvious that, as long as Guangdong remained so heavily integrated into the global economy, it was vulnerable to another ex external crisis. What has struck people is just how exactly the repeat performance is, once again, in spite of the years of supposed reform. The Japanese flee for home and the Chinese are left on the streets, while the Zhuzhians struggle to keep afloat. And once again, all eyes turn to the chief executive. Matsushita must lead the country away from the drain that everyone can feel it circling. He cannot become another Suzuki. The more they say it the same. Pivot and push. Masashida Masaharu. I'd seen the reports regarding the new crisis facing his state for the oil crisis. All of the news and internal signals he'd been receiving over the past week were all bad. With the uh, uh, oil crisis, or oil from the Middle East, expected to drop within the coming weeks. Most of Guangdong's important industries would also be forced to come to a grinding halt. And if that happened, the protests outside would surely turn into riots. Something needed to be done and fast, but for once he felt stumped. He slumped in his chair, his hand massaging the many new wrinkles that covered his face. He picked up another piece of paper with a PTRG stamp at the top. The report detailed several vehicle prototypes were being adapted for the desert and mountainous operations, given the current crisis. Prototypes were expected to be ready within the month. Surely Guangdong could give the rights to several oil sources in exchange for these nations to get an advantage in the conflicts with equipment, with equipment devised by the PTRG. The chief executive put his, on his jacket and prepared to leave his office. This report was true. We could very well be the solution that Guangdong needed to at least soften some of the effects of the current crisis. But first he needed to verify the report he was given. One wrong move here and his vision for Guangdong could be snuffed out in an instant. Lights come, lights in the lab come alive. Ah, oh, yeah. Type 20 or Type 28 helicopter. Sweet. Love it. Um, we'll send him to the Islamic Republic of Iraq. Oh, this bearded guy. Do we have any planes at all? We got a couple fighters, that's not bad. We have no cast, huh? Oh, well, that's a mistake. Should get a couple things of cast. Cool. We're gonna need expedition helicopters, anyways. Happy 1970, buddy. You know, this is a late crisis. Plug the gap. A company cannot be dependent on its creditors. Why should Guangdong be any different? Claw our way back, decrease the Japan's approval and expats for him. Restore corporate confidence. We shall spend our funds ensuring that the great engines of the economy, the corporations, continue to operate smoothly. Morita Akeo and Fujitsu's Ibuka Masaru will gain more sway over us. Conserve our funds. Drive ourselves bankrupt to save the many is to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We will spend, but only save those more important to Matsushita. Matsushita. Relief to small firms. Our contractors are the backbone of the economy, or so Morita says. Small relief. Guarantees for stakeholders. Necessary to show up the confidence of Japanese investors in keeping Guangdong's long term. Reassure the workers. <coughs> it means nothing we have no workers at the end of the crisis, but we must keep them in Guangdong by maintaining all previous incentives we have offered. It's crime, huh? Scale back production. Decreases admin costs. Decreases interest. Decreases profitability. Decreases Japanese export. 
People are an investment for the dreaded future that will come, even if it strains us now. Focus on streamlining. We know what they want. What are our sales networks for if we do not convince the masses they still need our wares, even in meager times? Assuming, of course, we built those networks in the first place. Because you took the focus on Matsushita plants in every home to run silicon years, we get the following effects. 32% more profitability. Efficiency through technology. Yes, people tend the purse strings when times are hard, but people still want novelty and excitement in their life, and if Matsushita can provide, they'll pay for it. Ooh, this is not bad. We know what they want, which is true. I kind of want to do that one, because that's unique. But efficiency through te technology. Their aspiration. In Guangdong, at least, I'll be bedecked in Matsushita's wares. Our vision. Such as something, a better automated convenient future. Free level increase in household electronics, the greatest crime. As the world descends, yet another, another iron hack of instability, the economy of Guangdong, once uh, uh, the great examples of the Kopar spirit sphere, is faltering in on the edge of collapse. The profits of every corporation in Guangdong are threatened. They cannot be allowed to fold. If all the corporations began to lose money, they would throw Master Shida's leadership into question and ruin his reputation. It cannot be born. Master Shida Konosuke once said, If we can make a profit, that means we are coming a part of uh, a sort of crime against society. His adopted son and heir Masaharu remembers those words and agrees with them 100%. And then in Guangdong, of a filial of piety and of saving his own hide, Masaharu will play the crime fighter by saving as many corporations as he can. Contraction. Well, that cross is now in full swing, of course, and all things had gone hacking back. Few people in Guangdong were more well that than General Nagano Shigeto of the Imperial Japanese Army. Oh boy. A phone call had come through for the chief executive in Nagano. It was Consul General Takashi Takashima Masuo, who had been summoned back to Tokyo on an urgent basis, of course, because who wouldn't be back on an urgent basis at this point um, after seeing everything going on? As one might expect in the energy crisis of world historical proportions, Takashima had only news of woe. This and that support traditionally given by the foreign ministry or the Greater East Asia Ministry had been cut off on the recommendation of this or that good for nothing bureaucrat scrounging around for scraps for his own worthless department. Where, where are we needed? Oh boy, we might be needed here the most. Um, what made Nagano really gnash teeth was the order sent through the, uh, the Dai Tao Shou and the Dai Hone through Takashima's mouth. The Guangdong Kempa Tao is to have its operational capacity cut drastically and its own operators to re be redeployed elsewhere in the Kopar Spirit Sphere to meet greater needs. For all that, Nagano had hated to admit it. Japan simply did not have the money or the will to keep order in the state of Guangdong as they once had. Nagano only one hope. The police which had acquitted itself decently enough during the Yasuda Crisis all those years ago. If now they too prove themselves unworthy, Nagano muttered, I know quite well that I'm going to do, and I'll do it without regret. If they cannot hold themselves together by the Emperor, I'll do it for them. I heed this warning carefully. Well, I mean, honestly, it doesn't matter to us. Look at that. So good. Minus 0 0.16. 0 0.6. Got a lot of Zushin support every month. They're feeling okay about this. Um, just in case we could spend a little more political power if we really wanted to. Make sure you keep it nice and high. Nice and high for now. Uh, 70, 70, 70, 70. There you go. Oil. <laughs> yeah. So, what are the goals for this one? We can close out this one for now. So, nighttime operations, mountain. Use equipment as part of a battle plan. Use equipment conditions and exceed 30 degrees. Engage with superior combat with the Middle Eastern boondoggle. Uh, General Nagano's in depth of rage and despair he never felt before. Oh, I think I read this before, so if you can read this one, please go ahead too. They don't like that we're getting involved, but whatever. Do we give a crap about them? No. We're here to make money. And a lot of money. Yeah, uh, it can't deploy them there. Let's deploy some planes. For rock forced into a hard place. <laughs> well, for the chief executives, uh, Sony Face said Ibuka, talking endlessly about the thoughts of the consulate general, although Matsushita was normally a stickler for detail. You know that all the important information which could be gleaned from this meeting had already been provided. It was all too familiar. It was as if the trials of the Yasuda crisis had only just been cleared, and before we could draw another breath, they had returned, yet this time the fault was not with Japan. Uh, now the mess was firmly at Guangdong's doorstep. Relief from the home islands was not forthcoming despite his outrage. To this, Ibuka said little. His position spoke all that Masashi needed to hear. He was super glad. It was not a mess for him to deal with. Feel free to uh, deal with the Consul General yourself. You can darn well try your hardest, but I guarantee nothing will come of it, was all he said to the Chief Executive's outrage. Both sides knew this was the end of the road, even if one was more reluctant to accept that than the other. This storm would have to be faced by Matsushita alone, armed with little but a prayer. Father, well, give me the strength to fight this. Circulating vultures, huh? And I, and I on the executives. Both Marita Akeo and Ibuka Masaharu, Masaru hold considerable power and influence in the powerful sectors of the Guangdong ruling class. <laughs> Despite Masashita's meteoric rise and dominance after the fall of Suzuki Taichi, that influence has still eluded him, but fortunately both of them are still wi willing to hear out their fellow tycoon. 
Actions can be taken to give favor and support the Legislative Council, but we must be careful about the way in which we make such a major decision. I would come to see press, starting with an expansion of either Morita or Ibuka's influence in Guangdong, and possibly going downhill from there. Is he here to learn? He better be. Nice. Sound some of agreement, nice. Look at the effects of that product cycle. Um uh -huh. The Bird of East. Nima Shuri. Uh, watched as the new helicopters came back from the latest combat mission, carrying a few members of his company. And as they disembarked, he noticed that the frame of the one of the choppers was proper with bullet holes. Some of that departing soldiers looked at the damage nervously as they got out. Masashi's new choppers were certainly welcomed by men. By the men. They had a uh, dual attack transport capability, so no one had to worry anymore about being pinned down under the fire with no air support. That wasn't to say, of course, that there were, weren't issues with them. The pilots in particular were always complaining about how thin-skinned they were and how flying one made them as easy to shoot down as someone piloting a hot air balloon. Jokes often went around around the MP sensing undisciplined soldiers to ride a shotgun and a chopper on the next mission. You had to be crazy to fly one, but so they said, but it wasn't like any of them had a choice. It was the military, after all. And we're do, we do as we told, we're told. Preserve innovative momentum. <coughs> Amidst the current economic crisis, demand for goods produced in Guangdong has collapsed. Nobody has the money required to buy any of them. Be that as it may, our production must continue on unabated unless we worsen our already great situation. Some suggest that production should be, should be cut down to reduce our costs. This suggestion must be rejected as foolhardy. We simply cannot afford the risk of long-term damage for production because of unwise, poorly thought-out cuts. Accordingly, production will continue at current levels in order to protect our past adaptations and innovations. Downpour. Uh, rain down the office window like sweat from Matsushita's brow as Yokoi read off the report. Consumer spending is at an all-time low. Yokoi's words were like a dirge as he read from a folder. Guangdong's finance has been falling by the hour and is barely enough to keep the manager from resigning. Projections rather the fiscal. Enough, Matsushita stood from his seat. This meeting is adjourned. Yokoi, bring me the files. Matsushita walked over the window and rested his hand on the glass. The coming months were to be miserable and there was no rain that could count. That was a fire that was to engulf his company. Yokoi's brow rose when he had handed him the file. The forecast, Yokoi told his boss. Much you see it turned. Taking the file in hand, Yokoi sneered. I get these are classified files, but I know they'll be in safe hands. Matsushita narrowed his eyes at the minister. Sarcasm, Yokoi. He aimed at the file at him, the point resting on Yokoi's tie. If you are concerned with the document storage, make a copy of yourself. Would that ease your mind? Yokoi replied with a roll of his eye, leaving Matsushita to himself. I will make it so. The news begins to tighten. Nice. Computer combo width, nice, not bad. Gonna check soon. Oh, we were so close. Edna Lot, huh? All right. And I am the executives. By himself, leaning back <coughs> in his office chair, our chief executive Masashita sighs trouble. He can't help but wonder how his competitors will respond to the current weakness. His current weakness, no. To the weakness of all of Matsushita Electric in this present circle, or crisis. The company's been weighed down by his own need to look after both its operations and the government affairs of Guangdong, so there's no shame in admitting that. Masashita has had far too much of shame. Uh, suddenly an idea comes to Masashita. As he leans over forward so slightly, he, could, he might convince his competitors to support him through this crisis, which they might see as an opportunity to arrest control from him, and thereby allow him to take the brunt of the blame for the unpopular decisions that must be made. It is risky to be certain, because the opportunity seen by his rivals is very real. In fact, they might become even more popular if they play their cards right in this role, but Matsushita supposes in the end that he has no other choice if he wants to truly come out on top. He's never had been one for gambling, but even he knows that great risks can pay, always pay off if skillfully handled. He watches as the vultures begin to circle and invited them closer. I really like this one a lot. We know what they want, yeah. 15% more profitability. But it's only 5%. Hmm. Let's see. You have to have it. Focus on streamlining. Eh. Quality goes down. This sounds like the one we should always do. Efficiency to do technology. So, uh, you know what, we'll do this one anyways, because we took the focus of Matsushita appliance in every home. 
It's well and good to cut down on inefficiencies or promote efficiency through te new technology, but it's just as effective to promote sales of the already perfectly good products we're making. We'll want to put our previously built sales network to use, putting them to their absolute highest potential to drive up domestic demand for the products our corporations make. In the past, we considered an advertisement campaign, bringing in Matsushita plants to every home. Whether or not that succeeded, let us use the infrastructure developed therein to promote our products to make sure that any and all deserving corporations receive a fair share of what profits are able to be obtained. What's not to love? A condition sturdy desert mountain. Um, is that, that's not mountain. Beautiful. What is even this template? Oh, it's 14. I thought it would be 12. Lead infantry, nice. Ruin, collapse, disaster. If you want to know about this one, please go ahead. But to what to what end? Sasquatch prevails in Egypt, and it's expected. Actually, you know what? Don't go there yet. Is this a hill? No. Are there, are there any mountains here? Maybe not. Give him a place for now, though. Oh boy, that's not good down there. Down to the bone. Oh boy. Order up. The rather bedraggled looking salad man walked up to the counter, nodding his head thankfully before paying his meal and sitting in the corner of the shop. Now the chirp is customers, chance suppose, but money was money. And these days, money was something that Zhujin like him couldn't afford to be short of. The little crest is certainly thrown off a banner into the works of the local economy. Chen had seen many of his neighbors in a state of panic because they frantically tried to reevaluate the property's worth so they didn't lose their house. Some of the local restaurants had even gone bust in the fallout. Thankfully, Chen's most blue, mostly blue-collar base was able to con continue copying into the shop without too much of a dent to his finances, which kept things ticking along smoothly. <coughs> As he began wadding, idly washing dishes, Chen could help but survey the restaurant. There's a little hole in the wall venture meant to appeal to the salaryman of both Japanese and uh, Chinese origin. Although, frankly, there were very few of the latter and a lot more for of the former. There were six tables, only two of which were popular, but that had grown to be normal these days. Normal. That word echoed in Chen's mind, full oil crisis. Normal was a restaurant having at least half the tables full at all times. Now, the small faces he saw trickling in and out held none of the playful banter he'd heard previously. Instead, a dour silence often filled the room, leaving the restauranter to wonder just how bad the stress had to be to get them to this point. Maybe it's better under Sonia Chung Kong? Our vision, or their aspirations. Having it in the will of the August corporations of Guangdong have entrusted us with the control of the land of the Three Pearls. We, not the overly charitable reformers of the state function, faction, nor the meritocrats and tech fillers of Fujitsu, nor indeed the proud Venturi of George over at Hitachi, are the sole guarantee of progress and prosperity for the state and its people. We must prove ourselves worthy of this duty, and we have every intention of doing so. In order to preserve our power, bring prosperity to this land, we'll keep the production costs low and prices in the appropriate level required for us to turn a healthy profit. Let no one presume to stand in our way or stop us from doing so. If they try, we will push them on all sides for... Uh, all of Guangdong and the will of our chief executive is what truly matters. Ah, oh, very good. Well, there goes Angola. Do this and maybe you might be able to destroy them all. Nice. He's just learning here. Oh, do we get more stuff here? You have to have it. Uh, and just to reiterate, ladies and gentlemen, the new Monster Shooter Power Washer comes with a coupon for a free gift. Be sure to turn this in at your local participating hardware store. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Climbing down from the podium, Liu mopped to swept off his brow with a ratty, ratty handkerchief. Most people went weeks without talking about washing machines, and here he was having to talk non-stop about them for days on end. A few months ago, he barely left the office, and now he's spending 12 hours a day, 6 days a week, distributing leaflets, talking to megaphones, and chatting up passerbys. The new outreach uh, targets that HQ cooked up were too much... Uh, were much too grand for their own good. All the other salary men who worked with their outrage when they told him they had no choice but to do it themselves. Aaron was being worked to the bone after the day was done. Lee would have to enter the nearby store and spend two hours evaluating sales margins, and then he'd be on the road again. Excuse me, sir, someone tapped him on the shoulder, and he grimaced. Turning around, he was met with an elderly Japanese woman, clutching a handbag. If it's not too much trouble, could you please remind an old woman of how these machines are supposed to work again? Putting on his best salesman's smile, Lee was launched into an explanation. If nothing else, this meant another customer, and he couldn't afford to let that slip. Get those sales through the roof, we have plenty of stock, and their aspiration. As you know that heaven and the will of the corporations of Guangdong have entrusted us with the control of the land of three pearls. It's self-evident that we, and not the reformers, or Fujitsu and Hitachi, are Guangdong's sole guarantee of progress and prosperity. But despite these facts, our position does not rely on us alone. And we're going to hope to per persevere our, or preserve our position without the support of our customers. There's as much a part of the recovery as we are. If we wish to heal the crisis bad economy of Guangdong, we must recuperate the confidence and make them want to buy our products once more. Let us set about doing it.
Yes. Wow, what happened? We have so many more now. Holy crap. I can only do a brief respite. So we don't worry about this, please go ahead. Uh, that's not really great for us, is it? Tokyo plot in Cambodia exposed. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's too much corruption. Yeah, we probably want to go to Oman next. Empty conventions. Consul General, you must understand just how unusual the circumstances behind my visit are. Matsushita Masahara began. Steepling his fingers on Song's desk. I've received a complaint from all of our major corporations about the present holdup of the shipping. All of them. The Consul General's face darkened as he settled in his chair, brow furrowed in contemplation. I did not control the trade authority in Chinese ports, Chief Executive. Perhaps corporate leaders can directly petition the ports or customs office. No, that won't do it all. They are trade exp expositions, Consul General, which the corporations cannot afford to miss. Which I cannot afford to miss, he thought. This is the very backbone of the economy we were discussing here. I simply cannot tell them to figure it out for themselves. Song shrugged his shoulders, taking his glasses off and setting them down. I can only extend my deepest apologies right now, Chief Executive, and I mean it. I guess I noticed notice about the ports myself that that would work, but my hands are tied behind the rat. Mm-hmm, Matsushita Masa remembered. Anger bubbling faster and louder with every word that reached him. And would your hands be so tied if I involved the Japanese Consul General in this dispute? Will it be so reverent towards your customer customs? These are their profits, too. You know there's no need for that song responded it immediately, leading towards him. Please, Chief Executive, don't make such a mistake. I promise you that you stand much more to gain from honey, not vinegar. That'd be the best that'd be best darn good a honey song. I don't think I'm making a mistake. I'm gonna make some calls. Oh, that was a mistake. God dang it. Oh well. A formal way of putting it. Chief Executive, I've been waiting to see you. There's another snag that comes up. Sometimes I think we all talk about our snags. That's all we talk about, Matsushita Masahara murmured. I just took his familiar seat in Takashima's office, breathing in some of the smoke and blinking in the haze he'd grown accustomed to. Well, yes, yeah, Tokyo's gotten themselves all twisted in knots about some of your corporate compatriots. There's no room for Japanese firms to compete in the Guangdong market now that the five corporations have gone so entrenched. I can't stop corporations from making money, Consul General, and I don't know why you expect me to. Of course, I understand that. Takashima rubbed his brow, snuffing at the cigarette, but that's a complaint all the same. They want you to pay the corporations to make some space for them. Matsushita Masaharu stared incredulously across the table. You can't be serious. You want me to pay my peers to allow competitors into the market? How would you go tell the Japanese firms that they've got the whole rest, whole rest of Asia to sell to you? Chief Executive. Surely you of all people understand how profit-driven these corporations get, the Consul General side, adjusting his glasses. It's your call, but if you don't give them this, I wouldn't count on their investments coming back anytime soon. Fine, I'll let it do it. Darn it. What do we have for uh, approval? Fuang Taika. External demand recovered. The chief executive's efforts to mitigate the impact of the oil crisis had an effect, yet the bleeding did not stop, the instability did not improve, and the calm people, the uh, Baxing, the uh, Shomin, continued to suffer. But this time, unlike the Yusei crisis, or the heck that preceded it, they did not take it dying down. Increases in the price of imported rice and transport fares for key railways caused back-to-back -back civil protests over two weeks. It was nothing like the police could not handle, but it still shook the luck on the government as none other. It was increasingly obvious that the hardships of Yasuda were returned with a vengeance, unlike the, with Yasuda, which was short and sharp pain, rapidly handled by a succession in the chief executive's office, the long drawn out horrors, or torture brought about the oil crisis was driving people to a breaking point they were making it clear. Big character posters and graffiti and other crude manifestations of dissent, easy to make hard to eradicate, proliferated throughout the state of Guangdong like a metastasizing cancer. Slowly, the chief executive realized he was having a worse than Suzuki had. Well, we're doing okay with corruption for now, so... Chameleon impulses, glittering lights, some just delicacies, elegant culture. This was the high society of the Koshi that Yasukawa Yoshiko remembered. Oh. Oh. <coughs> Even the flamboyant of the soiree had paid in the recent months, and most of them seemed to Guangdong's Japanese community were eager to indulge in escapism. Mingling among themselves, while the world outside convulsed from thirst and want, Yoshiko stood quietly in the, the crowd's, crowd's fringes. Sipping from a glass of wine, she remembered a familiar scene nearly a decade ago, bowing demurely before Chief Executive Suzuki and her late father in a similar blue dress trying not to make a scene. Maya, lady zooming to herself all alone, a middle-aged woman with talking, walked to Yoshiko's table, her sugary perfume clashing discordantly against a subdued eyelac -like kimono. I worry you're not enjoying yourself, miss. Yasukawa, Yoshiko bowed politely without responding to the implicit disdain of being called out for youthful solitude amidst a room of married couples. I'm standing in for editor Takashi, or Takasaki, of the Kantun Fujin Koron. 
Of course, the lady made a show of nodding sagely. It's a shame he wasn't here tonight. I want his opinion on whether the chief executive's promise on a bright future in Guangdong is worth anything or not. The governor's doing nothing different from when the Yasuda went under, Yoshiko said, picking her words deliberately. Then she'll be all right in the end. The lady's smile was as authentic as a Sakurai said she wore, for us, I mean. But the Japanese, Yoshiko thought, without offering a response, fading into the background, going all in. The corporations Guangdong must make a profit, or they'll be betraying the society that has allowed them to exist. As the chief executive cannot bear such a prospect, we've taken decisive action to try to make them profit. We've moved to improve the sales and production efficiency of our products. We've promoted our vision for Guangdong, but tried our best to keep the aspirations of our citizens and customers in mind. All that is well and good, but we can do more. Let's start doing more by making additional investments in our economy by bolstering its strength during this trying time. Anything we can spare now will be returned to us sevenfold and more as growth is restored and prosperity resumes. Cool. Well, once we're done with this one and they collapse, we're going straight to Oman. We need to go to Oman next. There you go. Nice. Hey, Massman's in data storage? Nice. This can fit how many sheets of paper? Tons of sheets of paper, my friend. Tons and upon tons upon tons. And household electronics? Nice. On the outside. Um, I think I read this one before, but Lam Han Soon rested resignedly as he led his fourth cigarette of the evening in his patrol vehicle, tapping the ashes out of the open window instead of over the overflowing ashtray. Even as crime skyrocketed elsewhere, the only interesting sight outside of the Yamato Hotel was a city full of Japanese in their evening wear, streaming homebound into the night in waiting cars. It was a scene that he'd seen countless times on Hawaii shifts year after year, even in the grips of an encore round of economic misery, this never seemed to change. Years ago, he'd felt resentment. The Japanese, nobody could call themselves Chinese, and not bitterness, feel bitterness towards their subjugators, or the years as he swallowed his own pride to make his way up the ranks. He wondered if they were relatable, and if he wasn't relatable to them. Equality was far too much to hope for, but he couldn't subsist on his bitterness alone. Now, as he watched a woman in a blue dress stand at the curb, waiting for her own vehicle to arrive, he felt the old resentment creep back. What a luxury it must be to live cocooned away from the iniquity of the world. His world and theirs were separated by an unbridged, unbridgeable chasm, despite the single street separating them in reality. The woman's car finally arrived, whisking away just as Lamb stubbed out a cigarette, leaving, behind, leaving him behind to stand guard over a world that saw him as an inanimate existence, a warden, a fixture, but not as a living soul. I know you just showed up, but it's time to go back. Can you guys actually go here? Why can't you actually, like, send them over, too? I don't understand. And then what do we want to do? Listen to the Ibuka's concerns. Bring in the outsiders. Offer Morita relief. Emergency R&D grants. New employment standards ordinances. Let's say Japanese corporate supremacy. That'd be easy to do. I guess I'll have to wait and see. Marketing does exaggerate. As they stretch through the remnants of the last night's rails, rainstorm, Hyde tried to make take in what the various light up signs that dotted the sky were saying. He never truly appreciated the atmosphere that the city gave off at night, and most of the time he was too tired from working a seemingly never ending shift at yet another dead end manufacturing job to look up and absorb their meaning. And yet, after working for 15 consecutive hours at the local factory, something possessed him to look up, and when he did, he felt nothing. A smiling, clearly Japanese woman holding a bottle of detergent. Accompanied by the slogan, For clean Asia, all together now, by joy, a happy, clearly ethnically diverse group of Asian children sitting together, accompanied by tackling extolling the virtues of cooper cooperation. Cooperation. A bureau of several happy-looking Chinese workers captured the phrase, We work for everyone. Hai tried in a puddle, soaking in its shoe. Uh, he cursed, shaking his foot. That would make the rest of the walk home more unpleasant. A part of him wanted to stop altogether and look at some of the more signs, but he knew there was no point in that. No matter how much Matsushi would try to convince Hai otherwise, and no matter how much they pretended to care, he and his family would never be part of the idealistic vision. We walk back home at a much swiffer pace. That growth is hurting us me internally, but whatever. Focus on one thing at a time, my friends. Go, go, go. A routine disrupted. Uh, as the chill water howled above him, funneling through the streets of Koshu, Murray put his cold. Uh, closer to run him inside. He watches the steaming breath dissipate in the wind before the sound of a car engine alerted him to the arrival of this contact. 
A big Datsun's put in view, a monstrous gas cutter that could only have been made in the days of the cheap oil. Despite everything that had happened, and with the rioting and the inflation and the lines of the gas stations, this man simply could not abandon the high life he could no longer afford. This contact was one. Sushida Miki, a legislative council representative originally from Matsushita, however, his loyalties had shifted as of late. Matsushita, a staggering end of the blow of the oil crisis, can no longer have the mungi, mungi? the money, and subsidize Bohar's extravagant lifestyle. Fujitsu, Morai's employers didn't either, but Morai had been steadily drip feeding Sushida with small checks over the past few weeks, knowing that he was desperate enough to latch on to any hope of rescue from his creditors. Sushida so stepped out of his car, shivering as a gust of wind hit him, and Mirai walked over. Words were exchanged when then Mirai handed him a paper bag and then it was all over. Most different to the old freewheeling days where Mirai would be taking men like Sushida to five-star restaurants for a five-hour marathon of feasting and negotiation, but he supposed it was more efficient this way. The oil crisis forces all of us to economize. Get here and learn, you ding-dong. Blurry lines. Ooh. Oh, they have tanks here. God dang it, that sucks. Reading through the latest budget estimate, as he had so many before, Masashi only barely stifled a yawn, nothing in that that he hadn't seen so many times before, and just an annoyance as he had read through uh, to get on with. Suddenly, Masashi's eyes found a particular phrase in a line at the bottom of the page he was on. Contingency funds. They're meant to be part of the budget to be used at a complete discretion. His dis complete discretion, of course. <clears throat> um, uh, as chief executive to combat emergencies, usually being passed with a little comment from other business leaders. With an increasingly wide smile spread onto his face, Masashita made it a decision. Increase the figures slated for contingency funds while decreasing an equal amount of funds from scattering of projects here and there. Each amount taken away from another project was made slightly different to make, make what he was doing harder to spot, but at the same time, Masashita was very carefully ensuring that the math did in fact add up. The last people he needed as enemies were accountants. Yeah, his deed done, Masashita gathered together the pages, pages of the budget estimate, grinning with a renewed confidence. <coughs> there was... No harm being done here, really. What was the harm if the money ended up being used for government emergencies? Or personal emergencies, when in truth they were more or less the same thing. At the same time, even if that were true, if the amount of money set aside for emergency matters were to be quietly increased, who could really complain? It would be difficult indeed to argue that he had done anything wrong, Masashita knew. After all, why shouldn't I keep it? They would all do the same. Plug the gap. It would be an act of humiliation, desperation, and stupidity not to mention a faux pas of the historical proportions for us to go begging to our overlords in Tokyo for whatever financial scraps they can spare us. A loss of faith is not worth whatever supposed benefits it might yield accordingly. We must look elsewhere for a source of funds to cover the growing shortfall in our budget. The chief executive has therefore decided to proclaim an emergency tax increase to plug the gap for the time being. But as we implement this program, we must be mindful of the severity of our situation. This crisis had a terrible impact upon our budget. The surplus, the emergency tax increase, will no doubt inflict further grave damage on our economy. So this one. We're going to balance everybody here, so. We could conserve our funds, which would be nice. We could uh, offer small relief to firms, but we're going to restore corporate confidence. Everyone, and their mother-in-law, knows full well that Guangdong relies on the major corporations, the big five, and the sort of tributaries. If Chief Executive Matsushita lacks confidence of the major corporations, stands reason that he will be thrown out by the Legislative Council, or the Japanese die before the day is out. That outcome's likely, more likely at the moment, due to the oil crisis giving people impetus to question the Chief Executive's leadership. Financial support will be given to all the dominant firms in order to keep them solvent and ensure their loyalty to the current regime. This is a balance uh, uh, Sony and Fujitsu, so that's what we really want overall. Get more Japanese expat support. And then, so we did this one, we're going to do this one. And so we have, we're going to do probably these two for uh, bringing the outsiders and offer Morita relief, but we'll also do allegedly Japanese corporate supremacy to help balance things. So we have one, two, three, which means we're still leaning towards uh, Sony. But so instead of reassuring the workers, which I would like to do, we'll guarantee uh, the stakeholders or for the stakeholders. So, uh, <clears throat> without the investment expertise that Guang uh, Japanese expatriates have brought to Guangdong for the homes across the home islands, Guangdong will uh, fall still. Hey, look at that. Close to the economic room. If we want to prevent such a disaster, we need to reassure them. Measures of reassurances of various shapes and styles, financed by general cut and welfare, will have to be made with all Japanese, with the presence of some kind of Guangdong. The conservative approach, this approach, to the crisis, will ensure that the Japanese remain behind us the whole way, and cement the established well-deserved dominance of the Japanese corporations of our state, hold over the population. Not bad. It increases Japanese expat support, so. Because um, this one increases us as well. But we actually might want to do this one first. 
This way, balancing is more because we'll lose some export support, expat support too. For all that Marie did is reform his allies, Lee and Ho go a bridge too far with their over concern for the welfare of the common folk and others that Guangdong neither can nor should worry about. They've been raising some fairly good points, and Masashida knows that very well. Accordingly, to the benefit of the, from the wisdom, Masashida will invite Marita and his reformist allies into more influential positions within the government in exchange for the confidence and supply. Well, this comes at the cost of Masashida's influence, it will increase the chance that Marita and his delegates will be willing to give our proposals fair hearings by sheer burdens. In order to ensure that essential services can continue to be provided amidst the current crisis, the government has adjusted the prevailing tax rates and the principles of shared burdens. Fuel and fuel surcharges, excise taxes, and the public transport fares will be raised incrementally to pay for the services we all enjoy. Lee Wai groaned as she shut off the radio with a despondent click, sitting alone at the table in her second-hand school uniform. It was her turn to get the groceries for the family at the wet market, where the prices seemed to rise weekly, others as the cost of food and energy skyrocketed. The government's announcement would simply add more fuel to the fire. Wai stared at the scattered coins and bills left for the week, week's food allowance. One part of their budget, the families kept constant, even as they tied their own belts elsewhere. I wonder how long it would last them in a month's time. Even if the government said everyone would get to share the burden, they never said anything about sharing the pain equally. It's just like the Japanese kick us all over, all, all, all over down. I, hey, spap. Slashing defiantly in the chair opposite Wise. Chum was right after all. Right about what? Wise sighed as she pocketed the cash, already feeling where Hey was going. Even if you and Chun don't want to want to fight for something more, I still have to make sure our parents don't starve. <coughs> we're going to starve anyways if this keeps going, I say, looking away. If we want things to get better in this lifetime, then we're going to have to fight for it. Oh, boy. I got a good amount of political power though. Attack wallet, call the crime, three and a half percent goes down. Uh, goes down by five percent. Oh, that's good. We decrease the decision support, which I don't really want, and we don't really need that extra Chinese support right now either. So, right now we need to do that, and we're doing okay. Can you guys keep together? can you keep them in place? Now you're pretty good for the mission though. That's all we really care about. Nice, very good. You are running out of equipment, which is not good, but whatever. Buzzword buzzsaw. In retrospect, Yasukawa Yoshiko felt like she could have expected Chief Secretary Ibuka's words. Above all else, the state of Guangdong is dedicated to ensuring that the five companies in the operations remain unaffected and profitable despite <clears throat> the recent economic conditions. To this end, a range of tax incentives and capital tax or capital investment benefits are at the top of the Legislative Council's agenda for the remainder of the session. Even if incentives and investment were standard buzzwords used in the Guangdong's corporate lexicon, you should go ahead and wrote down a single word in a notebook as the book are wrapped up, circling it twice in red ink. Welfare. This was welfare, all right, except not a single yen of it would be going to the population, of course. Chief uh, Secretary, Yoshiko called out, earning a reproachful glare from the other journalists patiently waiting to be called upon. Do you have anything to say about how the populace will be benefiting, benefiting from the corporate relief being offered by the government? Relief? The left side of Ibuka's mouth twisted upwards and a cocky sneer. Uh, it may look like that at first, but I admit. Uh, what we're doing is just enabling the companies to continue investing in new projects as they always have done. We cannot be so short-sighted that we would mortgage our future for the sake of the present. Well, for, for the rich, of course. So that's balance. This will lean toward Sony, and then this will lean toward... Um, Ibuka, that goes to those guys too. Is it not hot enough? Guess not. How oh, many anti air, huh? Happy uh, May, everybody, though. <coughs> Happy May. As we're all dying here from the oil crisis and whatnot, it's a terrible time to be in the world, but it is 1971. Go figure. Anti-air, anti-tank. What's we missing here? Oh, Bring the outsiders. The outsider brought inside. Pressure mounted all sides in the oil crisis. Eventually, Masashita Masaharu came to realization that God would be unbelief. He simply did not have the wherewithal to see an end of the crisis on his own. So he swallowed the bitterness of being put into such a pass by factions that he had convinced himself were entirely outside his control. He called Murray Takeo, head of Sony, and asked for support. Murray's demands were nuisances at best. At worst, they would be ground to laugh at him out of the office on a normal day. But the times were darker than they had been in years since he sued in. Matsushita could not go running now to Ibuka after being snubbed him like that. So Matsushita swallowed his displeasure and accepted the demands without question. Rise for the general populace? Agree. Support for the Zujin community of Guangdong? Fine. The realization of restrictions very well. A reduction of Matsushita control in some areas? Uh, okay. In the end, Marita came out happy. Matsushita left somewhat satisfied, but the bitterness and a sense of imminent doom refused to leave him be. A good deal or not? Freeze the budget. The economic crisis brought about by the conflagration 
Uh, on the Middle East, worlds where they have a greater instability and violence, economic confidence remains the best lackluster, with corporations and entrepreneurs simply uh, unwilling to consider many any major issues or measures. The chief executive of Masachi is therefore left with no choice but to resort to increasingly desperate means, such as decreasing or decreeing a budget freeze. Raising the budget and thereby drastically limiting future spending may well provide the economic certainty that Guangdong needs to get back to normal again. We must be cautious, though. This is certain to be a terrible handicap to us if a major future expense becomes unavoidable. So we should keep an open mind to the concept of not pursuing this measure. We get it a signal of our fiscal responsibility will be freezing the budget. Assuming, of course, the Leco and the populace would be happy with it. My word is my bond. Hey, we're done with the Navy. Nice. Good rearranging numbers. If there's any good argument that extending financial guarantees of the Japanese investments, I haven't heard one yet. He book on Masaru's voice right now on the chief executive's Masashida's Masaharu's office. Uh, Lingering in the air like morning frost, but we both know what exactly happens if they choose the, uh, choose, chose, choose the heads for the exits. <coughs> and what we are backing these guarantees with, Masashida Masaharu said heatedly, Guangdong operates on a shoestring budget as it is. The only way we get the guarantees is to matter is if we take on more debt to do it, which defeats the whole point. In my honest opinion, Matsushita, you're not being nearly imaginative enough. Ibuka pointed a stack of documents from a suitcase and tossed it on Matsushita's desk, with each page boldly crossed out in red ink. All else can go. Since when did the investor community care about the subsidies that they don't benefit from indirectly? And you don't think throwing a quarter of the budget out of the window seems a little desperate? Once they see the incentives we're offering, guarantees, subsidies, tax waivers, I don't think we're the ones who look desperate, the book replied. We can keep our coffers full and keep the Japanese happy because the Guangdong is the only place where the Japanese can make money, real money, on the Chinese mainland, and then I don't think they have any right to complain. Lots of shooters, not so. The numbers, after all, are checked out. So, we balance them here. We went with uh, Fujitsu, and then we balance them with Morita. Budget. And then we can either do this one, which would be much more difficult, as well as do this, but that's going to be difficult to do. This one's fine. But we'll probably offer Morita relief and do this one. Like I said, legislate Japanese corporate supremacy. The water struggle disaster, that is the oil crisis, inflicted grievous wounds of one sort or the other on all the companies of Guangdong, particularly the Big Five. One of the worst affected to them is Honey, partly due to its charitable insistence on better conditions for its workers. The chief executive is of the mind that such goodness ought to be rewarded not just on the pure land, but in this life too. Accordingly, Masashita has directed that an emergency grant be offered to the firm that this will show what the chief executive thinks about worker rights, also further cement Murray's support for the government. More just nice, not bad. More resolution support, which is decent as well. Let him move around a little bit. Anything about that here? Yes. We're done. You're going to be this, please go ahead. We got two more seats. More liquid reserves. Increases approval as well. Actually, where are we at for this? Beautiful. 0.6. Yeah, they're in the most nice. Awesome. Not our problem. Hey, product cycle, not bad. Let's see where we at. So we have the electric rice cooker. Ooh, I don't have one of those in my own house. 80%, 30%, not bad. I should probably buy a rice cooker. Well, maybe I should. I don't know. I don't eat that much rice. Um, so which groups can we piss off the most? We're still dominant. 97%. Mm, honestly, we could piss off everybody. And 10%, 5%, that's a chunk. Let's bounce it like that. There you go. We'll do that. Some comments include po the poverty rate of Guangdong population within your gameplay is similar to the uh, South Africa's ones in 1993. Someone says uh, uh, that now that you finish the focuses, embrace yourself with the oil crisis, which we already have them. And someone says, fuse with the state, Big Brother's watching, the Imperial General. Masashida Masaharu. I'd always thought of the Consul General Takashima's office as an oppressive place. Um. I think I read this one before. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you want to read this one again, please go ahead. The, uh, the Imperial General, so. The most irritating man in the world. Of course it is. I've read this one as well before, too. I've read both of these, so. If you want to read this one again, please go ahead, so. There's nothing we can really do but frozen smiles. We really can't thank you enough, Chief Executive. It was probably the fifth time that Masashida Masahara, the Chief Exec Secretary Ibuka Masaru, and Consul General Takashima her had heard the words this morning, or that morning. But unlike the beleaguered Consul General, the words never grew stale for Masashida. Seeing the illuminaries of Guangdong's Japanese community and a few investors from the home islands come to sing his praise was a sad for Sarai in the middle of an economic crisis. And he wasn't eager to cut the party short. Seeing Matsushita fall sh silent with his self-satisfied smile, Consul General Takashima hurriedly inserted himself into the conversation. 
You've heard it before and I'll say it again, but the investor community really sees the recent measures as an inspired step to maintain the confidence of Guangdong. Tokyo too is elated to see the interest of this company so dear to your... On the topic of recent measures, as the Opsie Squiz investor said, Having cut off Takashima mid -sense, we would dearly appreciate having a few more moments with Chief Secretary Ibuka's time. We understand that he's a driving force for the plan as a whole. Masashita's smile froze at the mention of Ibuka's name. Ibuka, sitting beside the Consul General, shook his head while waving away any suggestion that he took, pro uh, took precedence before the Chief Executive. The Chief Executive is the man who decides. My contribution is his success. Also, she could tell Yubuka's smile was frozen as his own. Let's say Japanese corporate supremacy. As the old crisis royals, the Japanese corporate establishment and lays low companies that had weathered civil strife in the ensued crisis without trouble. As entirely within the realm of possibility that the Zhujian firms may not may be able to fill the hole that they left behind if the action is not taken. This cannot be borne. Only Japanese firms are fit to represent and dominate Guangdong. <clears throat> Accordingly, the Japanese firms that remain have petitioned the chief executive to put his influence to use to defend the current order against these Zhujian come lately. And assorted upstarts, the chief executive sees the value in this, he will see it done. My word is my bond. Oh. If you want to convince investors that Guangdong is good for its money, finance secretary Yokoi Hedikate drawled, then freeze the budget. The wall mounted clock ticked onwards as the room, entire room fell silent in Yokoi's words while the man looked entirely nonplussed, taking a leisurely drag of a cigar. Chief Executive Masashita Masuharu and Chief Executive Ibuka Masuru exchanged several hesitant glances, even as Se External Secretary Murita Keo and Commissioner Sushida Kunisyasu tore, tore into Yukoi's proposal. Are you suggesting we tell everyone else to fend for themselves? Why don't you come over to the police headquarters and tell my officers their pay is frozen? If the investors run, there's no money for anyone, Yokoi exiled a great plume of cigar smoke into Mor Morita and Sushida's faces, offering no pro compromises, reviewing unnecessary spending with LEDCO approval is exactly what we should be doing in the downturn. Ibuka tapped his pen insistently against the arm of his chair. To call order as Morita, Tsuchida, and Yokoi squared off against each other. I take your point, Yokoi, but while we've always supported minimizing waste, that's entirely different from painting ourselves into a corner with promises we might not be able to keep. If things get worse from where they are now, what do we say if the Japanese start asking for assistance? Yokoi pursed his lips, digesting Ibuka's rebuttal without openly acknowledging it. He and everyone else in the room turned towards Masashida. Because right now we have nothing in the council. We're telling Yoko we're freezing the budget. We're on the willing to make the promise. So, it greatly decreases the maximum investment of admin funding, social funding, army funding. Um, increase our, sheet, seat, our sheets? Our seats. By one. Cash conversation, the ticket of the clock on the wall, was the only sound that cut through the silence in the Consul General's song office. It soon joined the tap of Master Shooter Masaharu's fingers on the desk. His eyes turned to check the time. Five minutes left. Five minutes of silence would be a decidedly awkward way to end an otherwise productive meeting. He decided so his mind spun through a few topics of a live discussion before landing on one he liked. If you'd like to indulge my curiosity, Consul General, you've clearly had some experience with diplomatic matters before this. Surely you've been posted in a number of intriguing places. Which would you say is most memorable? Most memorable? That's a difficult question, Song. His eyes turned to the ceiling and thought, his mouth drawing into a line. Finally, his focus shifted back to his counterpart. <clears throat> I was a son of the old United Russian friend of the 50s, just before the invasion of the Germans. Most of my colleagues pitied me. The best were sent to Washington, Tokyo, Germania. Even the unlucky ones went to Bangkok or Jakarta. A whistle smile spread across his face, seemingly without realizing it was completely out of my depth, a country I had not lived in which was colder than anything I would known. Speaking a language I had poor grasp of and about to fight a devastating war, I certainly didn't build my connections like my colleagues did, but... But Matsushita Masuharu tilted his head? <coughs> I couldn't have asked for a more intense learning experience, and in some way being in those wastes with those soldiers and the cold and the shortages felt familiar, almost comfortable, I have yet to feel that same way in any other uh, other my posts. The clock twisted past the end of time, but the chief executive didn't move, his brow still furrowed. Song simply smiled, took his jacket from his hanger, and made his exit. A modest man in a nation of excess. We've learned much of Zong Zhi Guang's character. Beautiful. So right now, where are we at? We are at 70% and 45%. Ah, alright, why not? Do we need more Chinese approval? Because of everything else, we don't have level 2 profitability, do we? We don't. I want to go China for approval. Nice. So now I have to wait a few days, which kind of really sucks for this. The New Deal. I've got an offer for you, Marita. From desk behind it, behind his, behind his desk in the Sony Corporation headquarters, Marita looked testily as his nominal boss, the chief executive of Guangdong. What kind of offer? Is this something I'll regret? Um, buying? Uh, Matsushita shook his head. Not at all. Pulling out a document and an official letterhead. He read out of the, the summary. The government of Guangdong is willing to provide assistance to the Sony Corporation in its vital projects. That will be in exchange for political support, of course. By my loyalty, are you? Um, absolutely not. I'm 
Am I looking away while handing a red envelope to some secretary of yours? No, I'm here in your office asking you to face your corporate for your cooperation. I devoted confidence in your company, and you would be a failure of an executive if you let Spike get in the way of a good deal. Especially if it helped you get a leg over those perfectionists at Fujitsu. Before Marie's eyes, the terror of being run out of Tokyo nearly 20 years ago played out again, repressing his fear of a repeat. He agreed. You have an agreement at that. Matsushita nodded and smiled a smile that reached his eyes. That's good here. Let's get to work. The Blue Bank. When the ashen faced aide entered his office to announce the arrival of the chief of police, Matsushita allowed himself a brief moment to grimace and run his hands through his hair. Judging by the look on the poor man's face, the chief was not happy. This impression was quickly vindicated as a chief. Strode into the room, boots clacking and spittle flying. This is absurd, he said before he had even had sat down. Our lines are stretched thin as is. The Chinese are probing our borders, and within our cities, groups of dissidents are just waiting for the right moment to strike. Now, their force has been castrated through these budget cuts, the doors open to full scale insurgency. Calm yourself, Matsushita snapped. This behavior is unbecoming. Your reports to me have shown me that the situation with internal dissent is concerning but manageable. The camp I die corroborates this. The chief took a few deep breaths, and the tomato red sheen over his face faded to a dull blush. For the moment, yes, he said. Visibly trying to compose himself, but the situation is delicate. This may be the exact trigger the Chinese need to rise against us. I understand the need for financial security, chief executive, but my area is of state security, and I'm telling you that this is a dangerous game you're playing. Fiscal health is a priority. Grant police exemptions. We must stay secure at cost at all, if possible. Exempts the security forces from the budget cuts and redirects some of the excess to the police. Well, we're doing okay. For now. Exempts the security forces from the budget cuts. You know, we'll try that one out. So, what does that one do then? Because we want security exemptions, highly increases security, increases maximum investment. This is Japanese expat support. Alright. We have 15 days left. Which kind of sucks that we can't do this one immediately, but whatever. Which, which should be fine for us. We should be okay in the end. Seventy-five percent, eighty-five point five. Well we do this one. Um well. I guess we're at 75. We'll do that one and then one more and we'll be done without the product. Decisions. So that should be good overall. Obviously I'm not playing this most optimally, but whatever. And there's a lot of corruption. Hey, better research facilities. If you liked it about that, please go ahead. We'll get back to the schools eventually. Probably. Hey, we'll see. It's nice. Corruption? We have none. Corruption eliminated. We're a Carter. <coughs> the halls of the Koshi government complex were, uh, oh, dr uh, dreary war of unremarkable Linonium corridors in the best of days, and Yoshiko could feel instantly that the day was even worse. Zujin clerks and Japanese middle managers shuffled past with murmured acknowledgments. Their gazes waded down towards the floor while the break rooms were silent and deserted of the usual tittering clientele. So the rumors were true, Yoshiko said, even as she trailed a respectful two steps behind her guide. A staff of the Education Bureau, I've never seen the government complex is depressed. Yes, yes, Yasukawa, a wholesale cuts to the personal budget, effective immediately. The workers decide rarely. No bonuses or raises, and they're not replacing anyone who leaves, of course. We're not even hiring replacements? Yoshiko asked. So all the piles of garbage on the streets are the haggard faces of the teachers and the maintenance crews? Even as people leave, the work stays. Her guide didn't even bother lowering his voice as he passed by an older manager, no longer paying attention to the dirty look he received. No... <clears throat> No matter where you hear from the management today, that's all the root of the problems you've been seeing for the past month. Not smarter. And now. Let's end the charade. Revert to the old ways. The old ways, also known as the envelope system, is a euphemism for bribery. This system, like any other functional system, is very versatile and can be used for other purposes, be those getting power, wealth, influence, or reputation. As luminaries such as the esteemed Admiral de Bar Bar Baros of Brazil have proven, it's of special use in convincing politicians to dance to one's tune. This being the case, we'll now make use, good use of it. To get to the various members of the legis Legislative Council on our side, this will of course fly in the face of our prior mass of anti-corruption efforts, but it's a desperate times call for desperate measures. So now where are we at? We are at... 56 days left. We need 5% more product interest. Let's look at that. Beautiful. Bring it forward. And then we only need 25% left. 25. 12 and a half. You know what? We'll do both. We should be good. So this one 
Uh, barring Zujin firms from becoming politically competitive with the established order, which is not good for them, but whatever. Uh, decreases Zujin support by a lot, increases Japanese expat support by a lot. Our growth will decrease by 15%, so... Is this the right way to do things? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. 115%, which is not great. Oh, ideas and miniatures. Ooh. 100%, 100%, we're ready to launch. Can we bring it forward anymore? Can we bring it forward even more? That'd be kind of cool if we could. We'd be like, we're good. We're good, man. Let's enter the web. Talk of corruption is nothing new amongst the delegates of the Legislative Council. Someone is always make, passing money to somebody uh, else. Someone is always making a contract and breaking it in with the same day. Someone is always covering up someone else's indiscretions. As current going on, there are nothing new. Just the usual trading of information, favors, and cash. That's how it seems to everyone, save one. Only Chief Executive Matsushita knows that far from the usual wheeling and dealing of indiv individual politicians. The current jostling of the council is, is doing. As he builds an intricate network of favors and contracts that allow him to have a majority of members dancing to his beat, even if they don't know it. No one but him knows how far the web goes, and no one but him can pull the strings in just the right way to keep the country from falling apart. The spider sp sits, precarious, weather in the storm. Thanks to our adept responses in the areas of finance, co cooperation with other five, big five executives, and the issue of production, we have successfully brought an end to the worst of the oil crisis and terrible effects. Progress has been made and the recovery has begun in earnest, but the chaos is not yet over. There is terrible instability and the collapse still ongoing within both Guangdong's borders and outside of them. The next few months will be absolutely critical. We must be extremely cautious in the way we go about things. If not, there is a risk that the hard work of our esteemed chief executive will all be thrown out of a window like a briefcase that were during the hellish time that was due to the crisis. Nice. Back on the main stage. <laughs> As we look up from the cantina the effects of the oil crisis in our own territories, we are astounded and worried at what we see around us. The chaos was by no means limited to the state of Guangdong. There's turmoil across the core prosperity sphere and the entire world more generally. There are many things that give us cause for anxiety and just as many opportunities that pique our curiosity. We have no small amount of problems to deal with. First, we have to address the fact that Chinese laborers, angry at the situation, are leaving Guangdong in mass. Second, we need to take action about the rumors of Japanese companies withdrawing from Guangdong. And finally, more familiarly, we need to deal with the ever-present squabbles of our lead coat. Our work is cut out for us, of course. The storm weather. Tanaka Kazui sat down in his office block's lunchroom and watched the signs of a business on the mend. Looking through the recently repaired glass windows, he saw his friend, Yamamura Shinji Miyamoto, and his whole lot of new hires he hadn't seen before moving boxes around and unpacking the various things that they put away when the crisis hit. Slowly but surely, life was returning to the office building. Changing. It spoke to the clear skies of Koshu outside and the now peaceful streets below. He saw, noticed a sign. Uh, signs of recovery and the return of hope there, too. Hawkers were once again confident that to sell their delicate wares, or delectable wares, good civilized people, not riding Bolshevist degenerates, now thronged the streets of the city once more. There were fewer and fewer closed, permanently signs visible in the other office blocks he could see. The businessman turned back to his lunch and began to chew, reflecting on the way things had gone. Times had been tough for him and his family during the crisis. At times, stricken by despair, Kazui had nothing more than do with hold on to his family and weep with them for all, for all he or they were worth. The stress too took a great toy note as it felt a sharp pain in his chest had not been there last decade. But overall, Kazooie was satisfied. Things could have been worse, but he and mostly everyone else knew that they'd made it through one way or another. At least he could rest easier now. It was good. Oh, man, there goes Iran. Too bad we don't care. You're still at 90%. You're still at 90%, so I'm... And we're at a 90, almost 98%. So we're doing very well so far. So oh, corruption. No, thank you. Oh, it's not, it's not going... What? Three and a half percent. Um, do both. Let's see. Friends in the Legislative Council. The greatest problem is the Japanese pulling capital of the Chinese mainland. We must convince them to stay by enemies at their disposal. Gain more. They will both gain more sway. Too big to fail. Will not leave the engines of our economy to gather dust in an idle needlessly. They will be kept alive if, the co if they cut costs, of course. Increase profitability. Increase corruption. Address the capital flight. If the Japanese investors are fleeing China because they see no commercial opportunities, then changing their mind should be simple. Assuming, of course, we're willing to pay the cost, both the money and reputation. Our own initiative will carve out a solitary path in the future against a tide of need be. Trouble on the border. There's no greater challenge in the flow of economic migrants across the border, both in terms of brokers and capital loss. Most of decisions may have far reaching consequences. Call on our underhanded allies. Yeah, we didn't do this one. 
We chose a game with uh, one of our underworld friends, a uh, life lease on life, and they cooperated with us. Then we must demand the cooperation for now. Keep the people docile, off sod normality will eventually become the real thing, and until then we must keep the malcontents off the streets and, and centers the same. Now, but workers are leaving for greener pastures. Then perhaps it's time to make the garden look nicer, assuming of course the like co hasn't tied her hands on this matter. Ooh. On our own initiative. We can certainly call upon potential allies in the uh, Guangdong Legislative Council, or lean on some un underhanded allies among the 100% legitimate businessmen of Guangdong's underworld to solve our current problems, but we have no need to pursue either option in light of the, of the strength of the chief executive and his well-known ability and acumen. <coughs> our chief executive is a prudent, cautious man. He trusts his own abilities and views those of others with well-merited skepticism and suspicion. In these turbulent times, he thinks it is elevated and correct to concentrate power where he can effectively control and distribute it. Rather than running the risk of ambitious potential rivals causing any trouble, we agree with him, but clear favorites. The Legislative Council chamber has been silent throughout the vote on the Economic Prioritization Ordinance. The passions of the legislators held back by a thin string of fear that any untoward outburst might scare away a crucial vote. By the majority simply here, the motion passes. Clack. The final strike of the gavel is a signal for the entire chamber to let loose a frenzy of emotions as Matsushita, Hitachi, and Fujitsu has been gloated over the preference that they would now enjoy in the economic affairs, even as Sunni and Chung Kong's lackeys bellowed and brayed in impotent rage. Murray to Akeo and Lika Shing sat silently in their seats. The ashen faced expression standing out for the stillness amidst a frenzied scene. Masashida saw Ibuka's mouth twist into a sneer at the sight. Even if Sony and Chung Kong had the financial wherewithal to survive, their influence was withered as the Zuzhi and backers gasped for air like fish beached by a receding tide. Masashida tried to stay as impassive as he could, standing and making for the exit as soon as he could. He knew that he'd won today, but the let go was his rider the second the vote was called. He didn't want to be anywhere near the streets when the news went public. So long as the Japanese closed ranks around him, there would be nothing to worry about, or so he told himself. They can be no neutrality in business. Trouble the border. And centers the state. I kinda like that one. We passed it, so let's try this one. Masses of Chinese, even Zhujian workers, <clears throat> understandably angry about our folks and our entrepreneurs and investors over them, have begun to stream across the border and search for better deals than they can find here. The corporations try their best to keep them in place, but our reports indicate that it's insufficient in the vast majority of cases. It's a matter of great concern and must be resolved as soon as possible. Though it displeases us and runs the risk of irritating our entrepreneurs and factory owners, we must increase the workers' benefits if we wish to bring the situation under control. Briefing. Merger Akeo noticed that Masashita's office was unclean, filled with a stale air and subtle heat that seemed to eat away at its occupants. It was time for his weekly briefing as external secretary, and for perhaps the first time, he was ready to run through the basics and get out. At last, was a report he had to give, as Guangdong's foreign relationships appeared to be near the breaking point. Merger dropped down a dozen or so newspapers on Masashita's desk, as in every paper of Koshi Weekly. Vast investor exodus over Chinese market crash, Guangzhou Rebel. China announces oil Japanese, Japanese oil crisis plans. Even Kenton Fujin Koran has reported about the situation. Chinese migrants are returned to homeland. As a complete collapse of the Chinese-Japanese relationship at the worst possible moment, as the primary point of contact between the two is already affecting us, I've seen reports that the lines along, along the uh, Guangdong border are three hours in and six hours out if you don't do something. Masashida reached a hand out towards the newspapers, letting them crash onto the carpet. He turned up to look at his minister, revealing deep bags under his eyes, kind of like me. Stop, Marita. I refer to receive calls after call. The world's already asked me about these problems. The press are ringing off the hook. The Chinese and Japanese consuls have each called me in for a meeting. I'm aware of the situation, now please give me a few hours and enjoy myself. These days, you'd be the only one. Cool. Ooh. More police, yeah. That wouldn't be bad either. Did we finally piss them off enough to stop supporting us as much? Just a little bit, yeah, Zhu Zhen. That's not good. Hey, the rice cooker, mochi maker. Cooking rice is fairly easy and non-labor intensive. As it's been time since immemorial, however, the process of making rice cakes is more difficult, requiring two people, one to pound the rice into a paste and one to turn it into a thick mass and taking several minutes. Mazda Street Electric plans to change this with their new SD1802A, which uses integrated motors to allow one to both cook rice and make rice cakes at the same time. Wow. Just add the rice, turn it on, and after a few minutes and some rattling noises, you can enjoy Japan's favorite snack. Another household task automated away. 100% more seats, more growth, more income. And China loves us more. As they like it. Beautiful. Oh, and sent us a stay. Strength to decide. Sitting back in his office in the usual chair at the end of the day, Masashita grimaced as the thought of his options for strengthening his control over Guangdong. He could reach out to the Legislative Council and his fellow tycoons within it, such as Morita uh, and Komai. Then again, he could also reach out to the Yakuza through Yokoi, which would be useful for all costs of moral or No, Masashita thought he couldn't bear to suffer this indignity any longer. Why well, should he have to choose between which man should inevitably become his puppet master? He refused. He would stand on his own for once in his life and endure all what had life had thrown at him without the help of anyone save for his subordinates. Only he, Masashida Masaharu, knows what is best for Masashida Electric, for Guangdong, for every last person involved in his corporate empire. To surrender any control uh, to anyone at this moment would be showing weakness in the corporate empire, and if there is anyone thing that Masashida Konosuke has taught him, it is a man that cannot be weak. Masashida Electric is an extension of who Masashida Masaharu is, in, is as a man, and has decided that it is high time he started acting like it. He'll cut his own path into the future, and will leave the others behind to watch.
or just in capital flight. <laughs> What you have is entrepreneurs representing financial portfolios. Values in the millions and billions of yen are threatening to leave Guangdong, and that puts our economy in great peril indeed. They say that if we do not put our money where our mouth is, as regarding prioritizing their concerns over coddling rank and file Zhu and Chinese workers, they will leave for a place that is more friendly to their money. Fortunately, that problem is not too difficult to solve. We can simply continue with our prior decision to limit the rights of our workers. That will more than suffice to reassure them about our focus on their freedom to profit and innovate in this country. Increases Japan's approval by 5%. That's already 100%, so. Liquid reserves, base. Uh, leave that one. There you go. Hey, do we need to build more stuff here? Nice. Trouble on the border. Or as I like it. Once upon a time, the princes and peasants, like of China's former uh, inner provinces, the heart and soul of the nation, found themselves boiling away in the humid summer heat. Unable to do not but pray for the rain. Those with the money spent on fans, chilled water, cool stone houses, and every means of making shade known to man. Those without continue boiling. Uh, one day they thought some wizard or genie would arrive and solve the problems for good. Now the new princes. Sad in offices that were almost freezing, shivering slightly as he sought to impress every visitor with a mastery of the weather. Outside these offices, in the bus stands, he stalls, and even sometimes just in the open, crowds of new pleasants congregated on the blissful covered cold, granted by the Masashita air conditioners as they thrummed away noisily, beating back the heat. Meanwhile, Masashita Masaharu himself stared at an account sheet that was certainly not anything from a fairy tale. It was better. The air conditioning program had been proven so popular that even coastal provinces were sending in their orders by the hundreds. And this was no simple one off purchase either. They needed the machines, technicians, repairmen, and spare parts, all of which we could only be too happy to keep providing. With this capital flow, there is now a sound footing to begin investigating, muscling their way into the foreign markets. More importantly, however, every man, woman, and child looks at the Masashita logo and sees a wizard that grants their wishes. Our border with China has always been a source of great trouble, but never to the extent of the present day as the chaos in China. The revival of their formerly docile national spirit and will to modernize and expel the foreign oppressors spreads into our borders. Massive Chinese and even Zhujian workers, understandably angry about our focus on entrepreneurs and investors over them, have begun to stream across the border in search for better deals than they can find here. We'll need to very a close look at the policy and the maintenance of the frontier and decide what action, if any, we're going to do about taking these immigrants. Let's be careful lest our decision have a disabling effect on the economy. Crime where it doesn't belong. I've read this one before. Um, so, you know, this was great. Have your fun. I'll personally take over a set of the police action stat, find something that's more important to you. So, if you want to this one, please go ahead, like I said. Fine, don't have your fun. Complaints to the citizens. <coughs> um. Our chief executive, what a pleasant surprise! Song Smiley, you picked a wonderful time. Please, please, take a seat. Masu Shida Masahara warily took the seat, plush seat on the opposite side of the table. Idly wondered whether the consul general even realized what, when he was smiling anymore. Endless diplomatic pleasantry couldn't be good for the man, even though in comparison to the general, Masu Shida Masahara couldn't help but concede that the empty kindness actually served its purpose in moving these things along. Yes, it is good to have such fortuitous timing. I brought my apologies, Chief Executive, but I must bring my own concern to the table. The consul's voice seemed to slide off a cliff, finding some steel within itself. Uh, Masashida and Masuharu blinked. They were heading another direction, it seemed. I mentioned your time because just a few moments ago, I received a rather disturbing call from one of your Chinese citizens. You see, he had been going along his business some hours ago when one of your policemen took him aside and beat him senseless on some trumped-up charge. He was robbed, Chief Executive, by the very servicemen who you claim to protect men like him. Masashida Masaharu blinked, the gear spinning for traction in his head as he tried to recover. Ah, well, that's terrible. A terrible thing, yes. We can begin an investigation. No need, Song cut him off. Again, and he felt a flash of anger shoot through his chest. But the consul's expression, his counterpart felt the same. Had he ever actually seen him angry? I dispatched Attaché Wang and his attachment to find the culprit. We have a badge, no more to name. The uh, behavior is unacceptable, ex Executive, and I strongly recommend that you punish a responsible officer. Is that clear? Mr. Consul, your concerns are mine as well. We'll, we'll handle this issue. As long as everyone, you know, is okay, and we haven't decreased the police uh, too much here. It's a little worrying, so we're going to go and do both these. Grinning, and they overhead and overstopped boardrooms of Tokyo. A smile was really no smile at all. It was simply a tactic, a joyless device meant to paddle, swindle, or conceal. And at the moment, it was plastered across Masashida's executive's face. At the moment, it didn't seem to be working. The corporate representatives, looking at the men confused, mulling their options, checking their watches, the outer regions of the sphere were known to be a bad deal, and for those interested in wasting their money in the doom of spheres or sprees of industrialization, China appeared to be a much more lucrative money pit. No matter how many charts the executive used, Guangdong did not appear to be the sphere's rising colony. It seemed to be a cheap copy of the home islands at best, and a failing clone of China at worst. And so they yawned and doodled and waited to leave. But when the presenter finally put away his baton and slides, he could see them packing, ready to head back to their offices and ride off these few wasted hours, indeed. Instead, he called them into a different room for lunch. <coughs> the investors would get their meals, and they would be good meals. They would come with delicious sake, fish, whatever these investors desired, yet the meal itself was only a secondary piece. The true play began when each investor pulled their out of their chairs and found a thick packet of cash neatly arranged in their seats. 
and then wordlessly shamelessly every investor changed their tune. Just another tactic from the Matsushita Corporation, but Matsushita leads. Ooh, the speech. The wealth of August Corporations of Guangdong has entrusted Chief Executive Matsushita Masaharu with the wealth of the land of the Three Pearls. As Matsushita leads Guangdong in the company that bears his family name through the world of historical disaster that is the oil crisis, he remains atop of it all with his hand on the tiller, following control over the direction that is the, stakes, the state takes. As a result, Matsushita's leadership has begun to be seen as a fact of life. That a man called Suzuki Tachi was once chief executive, a decade back is only known to historians, some Japanese, and the Leko itself. Virtually everyone else acts as if Matsushita Dono was always a chief executive. This attitude is indicative of the fact that Matsushita Masaharu has become inseparable part of Guangdong's structure and way of governing. A Chinese border. Chief Executive has been worrying increases of the cross-border smuggling gangs as of late, with an increase of 70% from last year. It must be remembered that for every one gang caught and arrested, two more have already succeeded in penetrating the heart of Guangdong. Most of these gangs are made of Chinese nationals or employed by nationalist organizations to smuggle weapons, pamphlets, and most importantly, people to agitate for reunification. In any case, these smuggling rings must be stopped for the sake of our stability and our survival as a state. This rings ever more true as a relationship with the Chinese population has been deteriorating significantly. We're already resting up by not securing the border at this crucial time. Subversion is already seeping through the border more and more, and we must take action as soon as possible. Make a decision as soon as possible, for this is a matter of national security. We cannot spare the resources to close the border. Tan security and be quick about it. Increase police control. One, two, three, four places. Um, hmm. I don't want to lose any more stability, so we're definitely doing this one. That's why I increased the, it everywhere else, so. <coughs> and Guangdong follows. As time goes gone under, un, under the rule of Chief Executive Masushita, the formerly artificial state that supported and controlled this land of Guangdong has proven surprisingly resilient. It's managed to withstand interesting interstitial conflict between corporations, power struggles, riot, police disputes, gang warfare, and even a myriad other problems. If you manage to persist through the, both Yasuda and this, this present oil crisis, more or less unbowed and unbroken. How do they somewhat recover from the most recent storm to better shores? Guangdong looks to Master Shida Masar to lead it in the next age of glo uh, global history. Solidarity of Valiant Lawmen. Speech. Master Shida Masahara, the chief executive of the state of Guangdong, uh, self-proclaimed so architect of the current prosperity, stood up in the chamber of the legislative council of the said state and made a speech that could either herald the beginning of a new era of Master Shida dominance or uh, stagnation and the decline before its competitors, or worst of all, possibilities, in its total and ignominious collapse for all eternity. A reader may ask, what exactly is it that the speech could have such stark difference, starkly different consequences? The answer is simple. In the speech, Chief Executive Matsushita went above and beyond in his rhetoric, choosing hard-line wordings of a sort that no one in the council had ever heard from him before. Speaking uh, in an obviously self-assured fashion, he announced his vision for the future. Time and again, he mentioned how Matsushita's competent leadership, its innovative researchers, and diligent loyal workers would lead the glorious city of Guangdong into a new age of prosperity. But he also spoke of making sure that hostile competitors and subversive actors will be prevented one way or the other with interfering with the divinely ordained Matsushita rule over Guangdong. Though Masashida named no names, the room broke into a babble of word words, voices as he made a speech. Chung Kong delegates were repressing anger, and Lee was visibly displeased. So many delegates joined Fujitsu, delegates in displeasure. For the first time in more than a decade, Morita and Ibuka found agreement on something, the same expression, combining disgust with anger and fear, colored their faces. The touch delegates muttered in, among themselves, and Kumai's face was a terrible sight to behold. Amidst all this, Masashida's confidence, unpunctured in a way it had never been before, continued with it and finished his speech. As he went away, he noticed the delegates' displeasure and ignored it, all the confidence suff suffused him. Tao to all justified his confidence was in an island of stability? For all efforts in rallying this exec the executive, stabilizing his finances, and maintaining production and integrity, and controlling the flow of ja Chinese workers, and preventing Japanese entrepreneurs from fleeing in mass, one terrible constant remains that of uncertainty. For all his power, intellect, and merits, Chief Executive Masashida Masaharu is exactly zero use in suppressing the unstoppable tide of conflict that now threatens the whole of Greater East Asia. All we can do is prepare what defenses we can muster, hold things together, keep innovating, and hope and pray to any heavenly power that will listen that, that Guang Dong will be spared the worst of what the next few years are nearly certainly bringing. Uh, settling into his unusual spot in the cafeteria. Officer Lam takes in his surroundings as he eats a radio playing an irrelevant speech uh, from the chief executive. That explains why there's no music. Uh, buzz. Uh, a fly buzzing fearlessly around the food line. He has that no one has killed that thing yet. Finally, the only thing of interest in the room, a group of officers murmuring to each other. They all wore the same uniform, the, the same badge, watched over the same poppers, but the difference was stark. Most of the officers, fellow Zhu Jin, cast weary glances at their Japanese peers doing something as simple as standing in line to get food or walking to their seats. 
The Japanese, for their part, seemed to simply ignore the Zujin and stick to their own circles except when they needed it to smile together to give the image of solidarity to outsiders. Lamb shrugged. There wasn't anything to do about it either. At the end of the day, it was the Japanese money which paid his wages. At the thought, a surge of disgust at his own servility started to rise, but he forced it down. It's a fact of life. He just has to live with it. He has to live, even if it's while facing disdain from above and anger from below. Ideas of freedom and independence had no place in Guangdong nor in his life. He had to live, and the Japanese gave him the chance to do that. But what is life of mere survival? You got a lot of army XP. I kind of like that a lot. Stealth. Guangdong. Uh, technology. 9 to 5. It was all muscle, muscle memory by this point. Yoshiko took the lift down to the ground floor, put her materials in her locker, and then slid her punch guard over the secretary at the front of the uh, front door of the building. While doing this, she could be thinking of anything from work to dinner that night. It occurred to her as she walked out of the building that day that it had been a very long time since she'd taken a day she remembered. Her work was full of flaw, fashion pieces, speculation of the endless games of musical chairs, played at the top positions of the large companies, the tips for running a better household. She got the occasional so, uh, social expose once or twice a year, but other than that, it was also so... Pedestrian. Turnover was high at the paper. Zujin and Japanese women didn't get along too well with each other, and all the Japanese there were graduates looking to ship off to Japan at the first opportunity. Yoshiko would have joined them too, but her own ship had well and truly sailed. She sighed, turned around, and stared at the up of the building. Maybe this was her role. To guide those young graduates through life in Guangdong to prepare them for the big break in Japan. It was her way of staying connected with her mother country, even though Guangdong had been her home now for almost as long as she could remember. A heart torn in species. Three and a half, huh? Terrible, I know. Normal. See, not too long ago, the streets have been the site of a temporary soup kitchen for the unemployed. Thousands packed together in shivering queues on the mundane little street in the middle of Koshu, but there's no way you could have known that just by looking at it. Why well, remember, though, and she walked down that quiet street, it set her to pondering. What had really changed? The oil crisis was over, the Japanese were still in power, and the Chinese bowed and scraped their noses against the floor. People looked away when the Japanese motorcades paraded down the streets, but were being noticed by someone. Resignation. That was a, a suffocating blanket over the city of this country. They had an opportunity to rise up against their overlords, but they failed, and now all there was to do about going about one daily's business and not to draw the eye of the oppressors. But why believe that wasn't over for them yet? Though their opportunity to dance away from this time, there was definitely something up in the air, a sense of sickness, the of anger rising up beneath the calm exterior of a submission. And someday soon, Shio, Guangdong would rise from his long slumber and send the Japanese screaming back across the ocean. Obedience and hatred strolling in lockstep, but if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow. I'll also see what else we can do in the next episode. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.